Greetings and greetings, my fellow nurse brothers and nurse sisters. Welcome to the Nursing Affiliated channel. For everyone watching, I appreciate the subscribers, the love, and everything you guys have been sending me, the comments and everything. So today, we're going to be talking about the million dollar question of the week, and that's going to be capnography and tidal CO2. Why we use it and what's important reasons for utilizing this device. So we basically use capnography, and I'm just going to tell you what it is. It basically measures ventilation. Not oxygenation. Don't get that one confused, my, my fellow nurse brothers and nurse sisters. So ventilation basically is what we're looking for. Um, the capnography, and we use this for patients that are in recovery, critical care, um, for trauma, and we want to measure what the ventilation is for these patients. So before I go any further, uh, the numbers that we're going to read for uh, the capnography is between 35 and 50. 45 milliliters of mercury. Now, the way you're going to see this on the monitor, you're going to look for the waveforms. But let me explain what the difference between oxygenation and ventilation is. So oxygenation, basically what that is, that's when we get the oxygen in our tissues and that's inhaled through our lungs where the O2 exchange occurs in the capillaries of the alveoli and the membrane. So that's when the O2 is then transported into the tissues through the bloodstream and it's measured by, what do we call it? The O2 pulse ox for a lot of patients that we put on there. 95 and 100% is what we're looking for. Now that's oxygenation. Now ventilation, pay attention my fellow nurse brothers. Now ventilation is definitely very, very important. This is how we get rid of the CO2, which is a byproduct of the Krebs cycle. Yes, I said it, Krebs cycle. And this is where the CO2 is definitely carried back to the blood, exhaled by the lungs and by the alveoli. And that's when the capnography measures our entitled CO2. Now you're gonna see the same numbers in the ABG. I'm going to put my ABG video if you guys haven't seen it, it's up here. And uh, of course, you know, you're looking at pH, CO2, CO3, and uh, the bicarb, of course. And you're looking at all those numbers in the O2. But for entitled CO2, you're only focusing on the CO2. And so when you see someone hyperventilating, actually, let's go with hypoventilating, someone who's not breathing in enough. So when they're hypoventilating, this is usually caused because of you know, from possible causes from uh, overdose, from the medication, patients who have seized, uh, stroke, or head trauma. Now, hypoventilation is where the CO2, level, CO2 levels actually rise. It goes above 45. So it's very important to see that. Now, patients that are hyperventilating, this is someone who's breathing really fast, you know, the tachypnea. This is where the capnography, the entitled CO2, will actually drop below 35. This most likely happens to our patients that are super anxious. I know you've seen them. Uh, bronchospasm type of patients. Uh, some that actually maybe have pulmonary edema decreased cardiac output um, and this happens so this is very important to see that number because for capnography you want to make sure that you can measure the entitled CO2. That said let's talk about how and what you're going to see on the monitor. So you know they have it on the nares, they put that probe in, you can put it over the ears and there's an extra attachment on the monitor that will measure the entitled CO2. Now during the expiratory phase uh, that is when you see the number, or I'm sorry the waveform go up and you hit a plateau. And once they're in the inspiratory phase, that's when it drops down and then it hits a plateau. So that's going to be a normal waveform. Um, and you want, like I said, between 35 and 45. Anyways, my fellow nurse brothers and nurse sisters, hopefully that helped. And tidal CO2, uh, it's very important to check out the ventilation. Like I said, the difference between that and oxygenation. Hopefully that helps. My fellow nurse brothers and nurse sisters, don't forget to watch my ABG video right here. And also my arterial line uh, video on this side too. Love you guys. My fellow nurse brothers, cardiac strong, nurspiration. Let's continue to just keep moving forward with this nursing uh, process. Love you guys. Can't do this without you. Oh, and also too, any comments, questions, suggestions, put them on the bottom. Love you guys. My fellow nurse brothers and nurse sisters, peace.